In this session, we are continuing with the hashing. We know that in the previous video, we have discussed what is hashing. Hashing is a searching technique whose searching complexity will be irrespective of the value of n. Okay. Now, we know that we are having different employees. We considered that example earlier. I am continuing with that. We are having a set of employees, 40 employees we are having. Each and every employee is having one unique code that is the key of the employee or the employee ID. Okay. So, this particular employee ID which is a key, so each and every key will have the distinct value. So, we will be having 40 distinct value. Okay. Now, the thing is that we shall be, we shall be applying one hash function on this particular key value and then I shall get L. But the thing is that if the key values are different, if we apply the same hash function on them, it is not mandatory that the address, the memory address that is L1 and L2 will be always distinct and unequal. So, sometimes it may happen that on different k values or key values, if we apply the hash function, I will be reaching to the same L that is the same memory address. If this situation occurs, then it is known as collision. So, that means two employee record details are targeting, are intending to get stored on the same memory location. So, this is known as collision. Whenever collision will come, obviously there will be some collision resolution technique. We are having different kinds of collision resolution techniques. Here, the sum of them are linear probing, quadratic probing and double hashing. Probing means you are searching. Okay. In case of linear probing, what will happen? Let us suppose this k, k1 on that I have applied the hashing function h, I have got the location l. Then at first I shall search for the lth location. After reaching there, I am getting that at that very uh, particular location memory address, another record is prior to being stored. Then I shall go for the l plus 1th location. If the location is not vacant, then I shall go for the l plus 2 this location, then L plus 3. So, in this way, I shall go on doing the linear probing. So, if I find any free space in this particular due course of searching, then I shall put my record at that very particular place. So, at that very particular location. So, that is known as the linear probing. In case of quadratic probing, what will take place? Let us suppose my location is at L. My location is at L, the target location but that location is preoccupied. Then I shall go for, so then I shall go for L plus 1th location, L plus 4th location, L plus 9th, 9th location. In this way, I shall proceed. So, I shall go for L plus i square, L plus i square. So, that is known as the quadratic probing. So, I shall search the availability at the location L so, if it is returning L, then I shall search for the availability. Sometimes this L can also be called as H, small h, which is equivalent to small h. So, I can also write this one as H, H plus 1, H plus 2, H plus 3. This, that is another notation. So, I shall go for H plus 2 square. So, that is 4, H plus 3 square, that is 9. In this way, I shall go for H plus I square. Okay, so that is my quadratic probing. So, same thing. Now, go for the double hashing. Let us suppose on that k, applying one of the methods of this hash functions, I have got h, the h means the l actually. So, another hash address I have got. So, let it be the h dash applying other hashing function. Then, in case of double hashing, what will happen? At first, I shall go for the location number h. If this location is not vacant, then I shall go for h plus h dash, then and so on. So, h means, let us suppose h has been calculated using division method and h dash has been calculated using mid square method. So, at first I shall search for h location, then I shall search for h plus h dash then I shall search for h plus 2 h dash, then h plus 3 h dash and so on. This is known as the double hashing. So, in this way, we can do the collision resolution. Now, 
what are the factors on which this collision uh, the probability of occurrence of collision will, will, will depend. Okay. So, I think there are some factors are there. One is the load factor. What is the load factor? Here this load factor has been denoted by this lambda. Lambda is nothing but a load factor which is nothing but the ratio of number of records by number of maximum number of hash addresses possible. So, in my previous video we have discussed that we are having 40 employees and each employee is having say 4 digit employee code. So, we are having 10,000 such combinations is possible. But let us suppose to store this 40 number of records I am going to define 100 locations. So, my age that is my hash address can have maximum 100 combinations. So, in that case my load factor will be 40 that is the number of records by 100 that is the maximum number of hash addresses possible. So, number of number n of keys in k and number m of hash addresses possible. So, if you go for the ratio that is n by m in my case it will be 40 by 100. So, that will be known as the load factor. So, if 40 by 100 this particular load factor is high then probability of occurrence of collision will be also high. And if this load factor is low that means 40 by 100 not like this 40 by 500 then the probability of occurrence of collision will be lesser. Okay. So, I am finding that there are some uh, three factors are there on which this uh, collision probability will, will, be, will, will be depending. Say so, criteria number 1 is distribution of key values. Criteria number 2 is selection of hashing functions and criteria number 4 is my load factor. So, on them the probability of occurrence of collision will depend. We are having two factors are there one is the S lambda average number of probes for a successful search. So, this is my 1 by 2 1 formula has been derived. So, that is my S lambda and this is the average number of probes I told you probe means how many times you are searching probe means search probe means search. So, average number of search for a unsuccessful search average number of search for a successful search. So, it is the expression for S lambda this is the expression for U lambda. So, in this way we have discussed what is a collision what are the factors that will affect the probability of occurrence of a collision and how to resolve the collision. So, that is the collision resolution techniques. The techniques might be the linear probing, might be the quadratic probing, might be the double hashing in this way. In the next video, we shall take one example and we shall discuss all these aspects with some numerical values. Please watch that video because that will be in the continuation of this particular discussion. And thanks for watching this particular video.